I'm so excited for you to watch our interview with Chad Wright. If you don't know Chad, he placed ninth in the men's discus throw at the Tokyo Olympic Games. We discuss his Olympic experience and his preparation for the upcoming season. Stay tuned for a discussion with Chad Wright. How was Tokyo different from your experience in Doha and Beijing? I would say the main difference was the crowd and my level of preparation for Tokyo as well. I felt I was better prepared, but not 100% prepared. I would say about 80%. What would have caused you to be at 80% and not at 100? I had gotten sick earlier in the year and I had to take three weeks off from training and I was stuck at home and I lost 15 pounds during that time. But luckily I had managed to put the weight back on prior to trials and got into some level of shape as well. That's interesting because th that's a challenge that we did not know that you overcome to make it to Tokyo. I'm interested to know, how did you regain the weight? Um, I started eating a lot more than I normally did and I ended up going on protein shake. Leading up to going to Tokyo, I was in Austria for five days before I trapped me. So I was able to just eat, train, sleep and that greatly helped as well. So tell me a little bit about that moment when you qualified for the finals. The night before I spoke with my coach and he said, Chad, the instructions are simple. I just need to qualify and make the final. And I was like, all right. I know my instruction. And funny enough, I had another injury prior to the qualifiers three days before where I had my heel rubbed off in one of the shoes I was wearing. So I had to be bandaging it every day before I could throw and even when I went to the gym. So like not many people knew that as well except for the medical team. So I could barely wear my shoe at the time. My throwing shoe on my right foot. Uh, so I went in saying, look, I have three throws to get this together. And foot can't really last much much longer. Another shoe was here because I was wearing it from the warm-up track to the throwing area. And I'm like, the next time I take this off, I'm done show. No, I really appreciate you sharing this because this is the kind of insight, you know, people don't get. I want to turn our attention to thinking about your preparation for next season. I saw you on Instagram with your first weight room session. How is that going? It's been rough. Like, programs changed a bit. My coach is pretty much a crazy person when it comes to the gym program. Sometimes. What is your current coaching Matt situation? Vastel. Mr. Vassal is back from India then? Yes, he, he is. He's been back from May of 2020. So he changed the program. What does he want you to do this season? He wants me to beat everybody. <laughs> <laughs> So what, how has your approach to training changed as a result of his change to your program? He keeps reminding me, Chad, listen, you're an Olympian. Mm -hmm. So your program has to be special. I literally have to ask him every week since he's put this program together, sir, what were you smoking when you wrote <laughs> this? And you need to stop. Right. But it must have been a, a great experience to have him back so he can actually see you. You don't have to send him tapes. He's there to observe what's going on. So do you feel that since he's back, you you feel more confident as you're preparing for next season? Yes, most definitely. Like My technique feels more refined going into Olympic, and that's one of the main things that saved me there. And I'm feeling like I'm getting even better this year since we started what, nine weeks ago? So it seems that your ninth place finish has motivated you and certainly Mr. Vassal to push you up into the top eight and beyond. And especially how I was so close to it as well. So you mentioned that his goal for you is to beat everybody. Is that your goal? What If you had to think about one thing for the upcoming season, what what's that main thing? What do you want to accomplish? Well, the main one is to make that top eight. Like, <laughs> I got to check that one off the list. Like, it has to come off the list first thing first. And then I'll handle whatever left. Sometimes um, athletes think that we have to have big goals and big targets. But if we do each thing incrementally, it will, you know, and check off small wins. Sometimes those count into spurring you on to the big achievement, which I'm sure is to have that gold medal around your neck. Exactly. And my first step to that is to make sure I'm in the final to have a chance to get one. Yeah, we're hoping to see you. You're going to go to Eugene. Uh, I think you've you, you've had success there before in the past. How do you think about the, the World Championships happening much closer to Jamaica, obviously, but you're in the States for school, so you, you would have been able to navigate these spaces before. So do you think you would have any challenges going to Eugene next year? No, like I've been there before. I've competed there a 
three years in a row, no, two years in a row for NCAA finals. So the atmosphere is always electric before they renovated the stadium. Like, right. and now it's even bigger. So now that you're no longer a collegian, you've settled at home for a few years, your coach is back, and a lot of your fans might not be aware that you have a full-time job. How do you manage the demands of being an elite athlete while holding down a job? I'm a personal trainer at Sprite Training, and I'm the strength and conditioning coach at Excelsior High School, where I also train. So the lucky part for me is I'm able to work in the morning at Spry, stop at around 11, 12 o'clock, have lunch, take a nap, take at 3 o'clock, work till 5.30, start training at 6. And then lucky now, since the curfew has changed, I can train up till 8. It's an interesting mix that you're saying here and you're working in an avenue where it affords you the opportunity to, I guess, utilize some of the, the equipment that you would need to for strength and conditioning. Do you feel like you have a good balance of this? It, it, is it impacting you anyway? You know, is training people in the morning a bit annoying for you or so? Oh, um, no, it's not. I actually love my job. The fact that I am so motivated to achieve my goals, it's that helped me to help them achieve their goals with the clients at Spry and with the high schoolers at Excelsior. Oh, they are a big motivating factor for Chad, I can tell you. Um, Spry training during the Olympics, it was standstill and it was loud in there. So, um, you know, we know that you have that support. But do you think that having a job, even though they support your overall goal as an elite athlete, do you think anything negative happens as a result? Funny for me, that's an opposite observation my coach has made, was that maybe I'm one of those persons or an athlete that is, I do better while holding down some form of job to keep me right. grounded. Mm -hmm. Whereas some athletes need to be able to just train, go home, and work on things. I seem to work better while having a job. It keeps me mentally focused as well. Because there's been times where I'm working what, 12 hours a day and I still haven't trained yet. And I'm tired. And I have to remind myself, what more, what more I achieve, I'm just push to it. Yeah, I, I'm happy to hear that. And maybe I should have asked you this a little bit earlier too, but your PB 6654, I suspect that one of the main goals for you and your coach this season is to be consistently in that 66 meter range and obviously above if possible, right? Yes, it is. Especially since my training partner has continuously reminded me that she beat me last year by one centimeter and that's been one of my motivating factors every day since i got back from the olympics to make sure i beat her no matter how far she threw who is your training partner samantha hall okay okay samantha i like samantha <laughs> like i don't think there's one training session when we're throwing that would not she not look for me like chad you know where to beat you again <laughs> at the olympics on my last throw in qualifying I'm not sure if the mics were on when I was going into the ring, but I walked into the ring and I was like, because I already knew I made it before I took that last throw. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to. Right. But I went right. in deciding, I'm going to beat her right now. This is my <laughs> chance. What is your take on discus throwing in Jamaica at the moment? Um, It's going well. I think it's the best it's been in a long time. And I foresee us having a serious fight at trials at some point in time, maybe next year or the years following for spots for the team, where nobody is no nobody is no longer sure of a space anymore. Everybody has to go fight for you. Right. And that all goes well for, for Jamaican athletics in general. <laughs> yes, it does. We have the ability, you know, to, to be so much better in in events other than the sprints. And it leads me into this kind of interesting question because field events is on the rise, even on the women's side as well. What do you think is required, particularly in the Jamaican context where you're based for people to recognize or to elevate that um, discus throwing shot put, but in your case, discus throwing to a premium event? I would say with the support, just equipment would be one of the main things and exposure. Like, since the when Banjay had medal at World Champs, this was during Jamaica exposure, Kyra, a lot of people decided, you know, more for sure this course. 
or when Fred won his medal at World Champs, everybody was like, you know, Chapman can't throw far, you know? The, yeah. the thing, size doesn't matter, yeah. but Fred apparently says otherwise though. But, well, but this one, though. Your personal record in the shot put is 1939. That puts mm -hmm. you in striking distance of the top 50 throwers in the world in 2021 and definitely top six in Jamaica. Why not specialize in the shot? I would say male because of my body physiology, because I have long arms, which is more better for discus. And in terms of shot put, I tried my hand at it, especially in college. I took it very seriously in college, and so I threw so far. But like, I kept having nagging injuries. Like after training sessions, and my hands would swell up. And I wouldn't be able to throw discus. And my main focus at the time was discus. I left Jamaica telling myself that I'm going to make it as a discus player. I'm just doing shot put because they are. So what one piece of advice would you give to anyone who is pursuing track and field in general, professionally? One would be trust your coach and understand your body as one thing as well and what you are and believe that you can do. Always see it. You have to see it before you. It can happen. Always see it in your mind's eye. Whatever you want to achieve in track and field. And you have to remind yourself every day of that goal. Well, what one thing do you think an athlete needs to do at the very, very start of their professional career? Discipline. They have to develop a high level of discipline when it comes to mastering their craft. Tell us a little bit about your your T-shirt. What's going on with your sponsorship there? All right. So I'm currently with Valasa. They're a company out of Minnesota that mainly specializes in throwing shoes and lifting shoes and they recently came out with a pair of sneakers they're just a small company now just looking to get their product out and i was one of the persons they approached and i accepted they mainly give me gear like competition gear throwing shoes lifting shoes and throwing equipment as well i saw i noticed on i think on the instagram you had like a discount code right yes i do so the discount code gives you 15 percent off all products even if it's on sale on the Velasa side, yeah, and it also gives me commission on every sale that you use with the discount code. Uh, best track and field athlete in the history of the University of Nebraska? I would say, ooh, somebody's not going to like it for this one, Chad Wright. Uh, what would you say is your favorite stadium to compete in? Tokyo, Japan. Oh. Favorite one right now. All right, and one more. If you had to do the ranking, who is the top three discus throwers of all time? Jurgen Schultz, Vigilis Selekna, Gert Kanta. All right, Chad, it's a pleasure having you on the show, and we wish you the very best as you prepare for the upcoming season. We hope to see you on the circuit, and we hope to see you in Eugene, and you know, maybe Tony and I can interview you personally in, in Oregon. I appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to that interview.